And in today's installment of Spring Tips, we're going to go ahead and look at server sent events. Server sent events, or SSE, are, uh, refers to a protocol that allows you to do unidirectional uh, uh, events being pushed from a service down to a client, typically a, a browser based client, a web client. Uh, it's uh, useful in that it's done over HTTP. A lot of browsers support it. It's uh, useful for any kind of unidirectional communication. Um, uh, this is different than, for example, something like uh, WebSockets, which requires a separate protocol uh, and awareness of that protocol for both the client and the service. Uh, I'm not saying one is better or uh, you know more useful than the other. Quite the contrary, they're both very useful and they have their sort of interesting use cases. One uh, thing that's different between uh, WebSockets and service and events is that WebSockets can do bidirectional communication. Now, uh, you may want to use that if you want a more uh, a proper multiplexed communication protocol. But service and, service and events have their uses. You can uh, use them in lots of different legacy browsers. They work very well in the command line. They're easy to set up. They're HTTP, so they require no new protocol. And if you're doing anything that is intrinsically status-based or event-based and you need no replies from the client, uh, or if you don't mind those replies coming in via REST, then SSE is just fine. So imagine uh, your Twitter timeline, for example, or your Facebook friend graph with status notifications being updated in the browser. Uh, these are ideal sort of uh, push-only kind of uh, uh, event updates that we can model using SSE. Uh, I want to use SSE uh, in particular in this particular installment of Spring Tips so that we can compare and contrast their implementation in Spring MVC proper versus the, uh, the implementation in Spring WebFlux, the new reactive web stack inside of Spring 5 due this, due this summer. So let's go ahead and build a regular SSE application. We use the web support and we're going to use Spring Integration. Now again, Spring Integration is just what we're using here to produce events. We're going to model uh, our, we're going to, you know, build a service and event stream of files arriving in a directory. Is that all that, is that all that uh, real world? Probably not, but again, it's, it doesn't really matter what the event source is in this case. What we want is to have something that happens asynchronously that we can then bridge and then send those re and then send back to the uh, to the client as a service and event uh, in both paradigms the reactive paradigm and the default paradigm as you'll see it's well supported in both spring mvc uh, and in the Re spring webflex but in spring mvc the uh, the implementation feels a little bit different than than the rest of spring mvc because spring mvc is based on the servlet api which is intrinsically blocking right uh, whereas sending things that may la last a long time or that may have an infinite duration is just part and parcel of being reactive. That's just the everyday programming model. Your default case is writing code that accommodates that situation. So it's much more natural, right? You're not stepping out of the synchronous, you're not stepping out of a particular paradigm. That is the paradigm, right? So let's look at the, re the regular one first. Uh, we're going to create a REST controller here. And the REST controller is going to have an endpoint. I'm going to say SSE emitter. Uh, Okay, files, and what this is going to be is it's going to be an, uh, just an HTTP endpoint. Let me say files. I'm going to map it to a name, give it a unique client name there, some way to correlate the client if we needed to later. And uh, the the way to do this is to create an SSE emitter. We're going to give it a nice healthy callback here. In this case, uh, 60 times a thousand second or milliseconds. And we're going to store that SC emitter in a map, but we're going to use that map as a sort of staging area, a go between uh, between the uh, web front end and the event driven asynchronous spring integration based back end, right? So SSEs, new concurrent hash map, okay? And we're going to say SSEs dot put putting in the name as the context, as the key, and putting that in there. And uh, with that done, somebody should be able to call this endpoint and it'll, it'll block, the client will block. Uh, the server side will, will passivate, right? The, the, uh, the, this implementation, the SSE support is built on servlet 3.1's async support. So this is very similar to returning a deferred result or a future or a callable in Spring MVC, right? That, that work will be backgrounded and handled on a second or separate thread pool. Uh, which means that the front end thread pool, the one that is handling uh, HTTP requests, is still able to, to carry on, right? You're not blocking that work. So now what we need to do is we need to use the Spring Integration File Inbound Adapter here to be aware, to be made aware of any changes in a directory. And you can see that there are a lot of other uh, supported modules just on my class path here, but 
uh, a lot more besides in the community as well. Um, so if you understand how to make this code work, then it's pretty trivial to swap out the inbound adapter, the file inbound adapter, for something to your liking, right? So here's our integration flow, right? If you saw our video on spring integration, then you know that this is a uh, uh, pretty common pattern. We're using the spring integration Java DSL, and we're using the integration flows uh, sort of entry point into the DSL. And in order to make this work, we need to provide it an inbound adapter, and that inbound adapter is going to point to a directory, and the directory is going to be the result of some configuration. So we'll just give it a default value here. We'll say that it could be any property called input dir, or it'll be file colon forward slash forward slash home directory forward slash desktop forward slash in. Okay, so whenever there's a new file in that directory, we want to spring, spring integration to publish a message. So we're going to say, use the inbound adapter, the file inbound adapter, pointing it to the in directory. Tell it to create the directory if it doesn't exist. And then we're going to create a polar. And the polar is going to have a, a, a spec. And so the spec is going to dictate that requests get processed every uh, 1,000 uh, milliseconds there, or one second. And then once the message comes in, we're going to transform it, which is it's going to have a payload. It's going to be a message uh, with a type of payload. And the, uh, the payload in this case is going to be file. So we're going to take the file payload, which is what we're expecting, and call the get absolute path method on that payload. So we're going to transform it into a string. And then we can handle that request, uh, that request using a service activator or what is called the, the handle method here, right? Uh, so we use the new generic handler right here, and for every message that comes in, we're going to visit every single record in the uh, SSE's map for each K or SSE, SSE dot send, and we're going to send the path, and of course this will require a try-catch, so surround that with try-catch, throw new runtime exception E, and uh, there we are. That's our fairly simple code. All we can do now, I think, is to remove the lambda, or rather, to replace the code with a lambda. And uh, that should do it. That's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and see what we've got here. We've got a, a REST control endpoint. It's going to return an SSE emitter whenever there's a request for a different name. Um, if it's already there, I suppose it'll just replace it. And uh, we're going to Publish and uh, publish a message into each one of these SSEs whenever a file arrives via the inbound adapter. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this and see it work. All right, now then, we should be able to go to my desktop directory. In there we are. Uh, let's go ahead and start up a test here or a client, if you will. So, on the left, curl HTTP local local host eighty eighty four slash files forward slash uh, Spring, okay, so we're going to watch that directory, or watch this stream on the left, and now we can create some files. Touch high, right, there's that. Touch low, touch world, etc. So each time we create a new file in that directory, that appears as an event on the left. So that seems to be working, right? And of course, this is well supported in uh, browsers, so if you're using Chrome or, or Safari or whatever, it'll, it'll do the right thing there, okay? So this is the sort of traditional way of implementing service and events, not all that bad. And uh, again, it's worth highlighting that the only thing that would need to change if you wanted to talk to some other system is this bit right here. The rest of the code, well, and presumably this bit if you're not returning a file, but the, the messaging code is indifferent to the source of the message, right, of the event. So this is the first approach. This is what we'll call the regular SSE approach. Now let's look at the uh, same trick, the same implementation, but done in terms of the reactive Webflux stack. Okay, so kill Java. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to go back to start.spring.io. We're going to use Spring Webflux, which is inside of uh, Spring, Spring, uh, Spring 5, which is due uh, later this year. So as a result, the only support for it in Spring Boot is in the 2.0 snapshots. And we're going to call this the reactive SSE. Okay, and we'll use reactive web, and we'll use Spring Integration again. We're going to hit Generate. And the same is true as last time. We're going to use the Spring Integration Inbound File Adapter, so we need to add that to our class path, lest we forget. 
close that off and uh, let's write some code. So this is also a REST controller and here we're using the uh, web support again. We're going to say that we want to return all the files for a given name name and we're going to return a flux of string. Now fluxes are the type that you use in the reactive support inside of a Spring 5. They're based on, they're from the project, the reactor project, the uh, Pivotal Reactor project. They describe a 0 to n valued stream of potentially unlimited data, right? So they notify you, they're like a completable future that has more than just one value, right? So that may happen over and over and over and over and over. So path name variable, path variable name rather, and uh, what we, want, what we want to do is to respond to an event happening from Spring Integration. So when Spring Integration sees a new inbound, uh, inbound uh, file, when the new, new event arrives, we're going to publish that message on a channel, and then we're going to have a, our, we're going to have each new client get a new subscriber to that channel, and then we'll use that event in the message handler to then write to the uh, to the flux, right? The, the publisher for the flux. So same basic flow for Spring Integration, except that instead of having a handle method, we're going to create multiple handle methods, a publish subscribe handle. So let's see. Curly bracket, curly bracket. Input dear colon file colon forward slash forward slash home desktop in and I'm going to say files dot inbound adapter is equal to in and then we're going to use auto create directory true create this the polar again spec spec dot fixed rate equals a thousand and uh, here we're going to send the data send the resulting message after transformation on a channel so let's transform it right so get absolute path and then on a channel, we're going to call this files. Uh, we need to create that um, channel. So bean subscribable channel files channel. And uh, we're going to use the message channels DSL to create a publish subscribe channel and then use that to connect you know, one messaging event based thing to another. So we're going to use any, we're going to send a message into this channel and whenever somebody makes a request on this, we're going to add a new listener to that channel. Okay. So now we say uh, flux.create sync and the sync is the, the thing that uh, we're going to write events to. Uh, but we're going to remember the reactive, the reactive uh, you know, handling happens in a, an event loop. It's not happening in a separate thread pool. So we want to make sure that we use a serialized sync because there's a there's implicitly two different things happening here. There's the w events happening from spring integration, which could happen over, over multiple threads, and there's the event loop happening in the reactor world. So we want to bridge that with a serialized uh, sync. And we're going to use that to create a message handler. Handler equals new message handler. And uh, Whenever a message comes in, we'll take its payload and cast it to a string. Okay, and uh, we're going to write that out to the serialized sync, right? Like so. So we're going to say call the next method. That is to say, notify the the flux that there's a new value by passing in the publisher or the, rather the payload. Now, of course, this could be a lambda, so we can replace that with a lambda. That's much easier and in fact we could just do this right that becomes pretty clean as well and if we do that we might as well do this as well so now we're down to the barest of code right and in fact this could be just a message keep it simple uh, so what we want to do now is we want to say uh, files channel dot subscribe handler and that's it we want to turn that as a response now of course you could take care to uh, What did we do? Oh, string, right? What we what we, we could take care of and we should take care of uh, to uh, disconnect this handler from the channel when the handler is done. So uh, we can also say handler, or rather serialized dot set cancellation 
So whenever there's a cancellation on the stream, we want to say uh, uh, files channel dot unsubscribe handler. Okay, and then we subscribe it and we return that, and that will you know Spring Webflux will automatically process that flux. It'll take that and background it in the same way, but uh, this is what you do for everything. Everything that is multi-valued, you return as a flux in, in Spring Webflux. So it's really not all that different. It's the same paradigm. Uh, we're just used to thinking about it. It's the default approach as opposed to the a, a, a typical exceptional approach. Okay, let's go ahead and run this and see what it works. Now, I think that's probably going to fail, now that I think of it, because I forgot to put the MIME type. So let's do that here as well. Okay, let's just, there we go. I'll restart. Let's go ahead and test it. We'll go ahead and curl the endpoint HTTP localhost 8080 forward slash files forward slash Bob. And here we can say touch high. Uh, I think that file is already there. So high 10. There we go. 11, 12, 13, etc. Right. So as we do that, it's updating on the client side as well. Uh, in both cases, we achieve the result. We're sending long-lived I/O back to the client. It's being backgrounded, uh, but I think you'll agree that the approach using Spring Web Flux feels more natural. And in this case, it's also been a valuable opportunity for us to look at how to bridge a threading-based, event-driven event sort of uh, code with the sort of uh, event loop-based uh, approach for the Spring Web Flux Web Flux project. With that, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.